been a great privilege and pleasure to lead the Water Science Task Force. One of the great privileges of my life is dealing uh, with some terrific challenges, but working with wonderful people. We've had a great task team uh, supported by a brilliant review group uh, and some terrific people also inside the department supporting us. We've run a comprehensive process to try and get to grips with these challenges which are about the future. The future of this major asset that we all have responsibility for and that's the Great Barrier Reef. One of the key conclusions is that we are all in this together. We have major challenges, we have major responsibilities, but the group have come up with some outstanding recommendations around getting it right, providing serious resilience in the water quality improvement for the future of our Great Barrier Reef. Well, the Great Barrier Reef is facing some really big challenges, be they climate change or really serious issues like the runoff of nutrients and sediments. Now, the best thing we can do um, as a state and a nation is to face up to the problems and look at them with the, you know, the, the clear view of science, find those solutions and put them into play because we're really at a critical point now. The Task Force is in a fortunate position of building on a lot of science and knowledge from um, years of investment from the Australian Queensland Government. So we're able to use that to identify where we should be investing the money and the sorts of actions that we should be focusing on. We are hoping as a task force to be able to give some clear guidance about how we can maintain vibrant and healthy communities uh, in the lands of the reef and in the tourism industries on the reef, but do that in a way that we can actually ensure the health of the reef there is a lot of people relying on the reef, whether it's tourism and fishing or agriculture in the catchments. It's about how we work with all those people and how we build a better future for all. Uh, there are several messages from the Task Force report that are really important. The key one is that there is no silver bullet. There's no one technique that will be used. What we are recommending is a whole suite of techniques in a staged way. And the key thing is we need to start picking up our game and, and moving quicker in terms of changing the water quality at the farm level, which will translate down the stream into the end of the catchment and out to the reef. I think the, the main take home message from the task force's work is how complex the issue of water quality uh, in the GBR is. And I think that the other positive message though is that there are clear win-wins in this, in this space where people can make practice changes which will maintain productivity and perhaps in some cases even in improve profitability, but also achieve some significant water quality outcomes at the same time. The Great Barrier Reef is an extraordinary natural asset on our doorstep. We have to do what we can to protect it for the benefit of current and future generations. And in order to do that, what's necessary is for us to pursue a successful and sustainable coexistence between land-based industries and the reef itself. It's been great to be with a range of diverse people with different ideas and perspectives. Also the consultation with stakeholders means that we have a broader perspective still and then coming together to work through the issues and discuss them quite openly. So I think we've come up with a set of recommendations that are really well balanced. The main outcome is to get the outcome for the reef. So we need to ensure that we can get uh, industry to coexist with the reef among all other environmental issues. I think the industry is uh, going to find value in the report. Uh, I'm expecting the industry won't agree with everything that's in the report, but uh, on balance I think it's a, a very well balanced, unbiased uh, report to go forward. I think the future really is a healthy, vibrant reef that is able to accommodate those pressures and also able to sustain the livelihoods and lifestyles of the Queensland community that lives along it.